The ESP32 C5 is a chip which you can buy today. And in this little video, I'm going to show you how to buy it. And I will also take a first look at what you actually get inside the package. And yes, there will soon be a follow-up video which looks at the actual bring-up of the modules. As for the company where we are actually buying them from, it is a Espressives distributor wireless tag. And here we see, for example, if it would let me show it, we see the insides of the P4 module. And they also provide a wide range of smart screens, which we partially discussed in the past. And be that as it may, the actual purchase happens via Alibaba. Here you see the price for the C5 and here you see the price for the P4 and you can buy them there and you of course get all the purchase protection and everything and the links which I was given by Mrs. Wendy, I have them here in the show notes below for you. And here we've got the box, so we have to cut into it as always. Always a bit of a maneuver to get into these. And here we have the modules still manually labeled as we see. This is still very, very early technology. And before we dig into these modules anymore, I just wanted to say thank you to Wendy from Wireless Tag for accelerating the shipment for me so much. And here we've got the C5 module, which we see here, 10 of them. And here in this second bag, we got the P4 which at the time was a bit more limited in stock and which is here and which has a different layout. We are going to look at them in more detail very shortly. And here we've got our two modules and we're going to be using our analog XWZ multimeter from Omicron. And the first one we are going to look at is the actual C5 module, which I have here in my hand and which I'm now putting here in the middle. And the first question, of course, concerns the size of the thing. And I'm going to put here next to it. And we see here it's about two centimeters and a bit. And we see here, of course, on the top of the module, we see there is a space for an antenna interface, but the thing also has its PCB antenna here. And if we turn it around like so, we see here we've got the big ground pad and here we've got some of the signal connections. So practically you will want to either solder the jump wires to these here or put it on a PCB and either way you need an external USB to serial converter to get this thing properly working. And the eternal question is does it easily fit a breadboard? And to this we can take some DuPont header and apply it. And to me it looks as if it almost fits, not perfectly. So you cannot use a DuPont header directly, but the spacing is large enough from my point of view that you should be able to just solder in the pads or rather the wires by hand. And yes, from the other side, it's confirmed again, but this is a minuscule issue. So, 
Our next victim is the ESP32P4 module. which we immediately see obviously some differences. We see first of all there is no antenna, no nothing there, but this is obvious, it's a compute module. And secondarily, the pitch is just much, 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 much smaller. As you can see here, the, the pitch on the pins is very, very small, and I don't think it will be comfortably possible to solder wires to it. And if we turn it around, also at the bottom, we see there is no inscription of the pins. Whereas here, as you remember from before, there is the description. But in principle, these two things are the same. For both of them, if you want to program them, you need an external commanding device, such as an FTDI mini module. With that, I have to apologize, Embedded World is coming, and I will be away for a few days. But when I come back, we will take these modules and give them a good spin. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching, and bye-bye.